Okay, so on to the next one. Part two of the controller marathon, the controller palooza. This one has a keypad that's not working, obviously. So this is probably gonna be one of those ones that's not an obvious damage, just looking at it, that I'm gonna to have to revisit when it's plugged in too. But let's just see what we got going on this one. I know this is getting redundant. Everyone's getting taken apart the same way. But you know, if you watch it enough, then you get a really good feeling for how these controllers are made. And you may not be nervous or reluctant to actually work on your controller. Now, just uh, just a little. I'm gonna just. I just want to show you something here. This center one here goes into the into the plastic portion of the controller stick, the joystick, the base. So if you don't remove that one, you can leave that one in there. Get all these screws out. Just pull out the four outsides. See, the base stays attached in there, it doesn't go anywhere. You have to remove that one. So, you can always do that if you didn't want to, like, pull it apart and have it come out of the case. Now, this one is fascinating. Well, see, now this could be our issue right here. Well, I don't know if you can see this. It does appear this has been apart before. Let's get some of this extra stuff out of the way. But... We do have at least one wire not connected. So that one wire not being connected is probably why the controller don't work. Someone has fixed this one in the past because this is not standard ColecoVision. ColecoVision was very skimpy on their stuff. They used just a white piece of white tape or cellophane tape on there and they used a lot of hot glue wear. So we're gonna have to fix that. So I have to plug my soldering iron in. Wasn't even expecting the solder. But that's actually a good sign too. This keypad is still kind of ucky, but we're, we're going to go with it for now and see what it does. While the soldering iron is warming up, let's... Yeah, I don't have a... Well, I have spares, but I don't have a spare right this moment, so... We'll see. I'll just keep that in mind. I'm just going to test with it so I know it works, and then we'll go from there. But while I'm waiting on that, let's get out the cleaners. And let's just clean this buttons and everything so that they are done while waiting on the soldering iron to to warm up, heat up. Some nice little cleaning in there. Take a little bit of this here. Get up in there. Get in the slot. Thank you. Today's a nice quiet day here at my office. It's President's Day, so my other office buddies and the other offices are in there taking the day off. I mean, I'm self-employed, I don't take holidays. And then the bagel shop, who uses one of the offices as their break room, they're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. So it's very quiet here today for me. Just me all by myself. Mm -hmm. Alright, guess I can't use my fingers. And where are you at? There are many ways to remove wire when you're going to solder. You can try to use your finger to strip it off. You can use a wire stripper or you can just take that. Just heat up the plastic a little bit. You probably could do it with just soldering iron too, but I don't want to get plastic on my iron if I can help it. But there we go. I got the wire stripped out. And spin it just to make sure that there's no loose wires hanging out. Nice thing about ColecoVision, they tell you which one it is, and it's that one right there, the yellow. That somebody did blob solder on, but it didn't work. I need something to hold this in place. Just something with some weight on it will work. This right here. Just something just to hold that so it doesn't bounce around on me. While I'm waiting for my soldering iron to heat up. And my solder, my thin solder that I like to use. So let's just see. Are you hot yet? 
Yeah, you're hot enough. We ain't got to do much here. We probably can just take advantage of the start that's already there. But let's just see if I can get you to go in there. Melt. All right, my battery just crapped out there right when I was soldering, so I'm not sure what I got. So I just want to show you what I did. Is we got this right here, and I'm going to add a little bit more solder because the solder that was originally on there is not a... I don't like it. So let's just put a little bit more in here. Get back here, wire. What I'm doing is just attaching the wire. Blow on it a little bit. Then just gonna look at these others, make sure all these others are good. This brown one is not really pretty at all. It's hanging by a thread. Wow. Yeah. Let's see. The brown one is hanging by a thread. The gray one has strands all over the place. So yeah, the person didn't do a good job soldering this back together. Let's see what I can do to put it back. Give me some extra solder on here. Let's get this gray one in place and let's just solder these strands in at least. Yeah, well, looks like it came apart. Might as well now just twist them all together. And re solder. I might just do the whole all of them just so I don't know what they're in. Blue one. Eh. Again, you got strands hanging out, and that's not good. You don't want strands hanging out anywhere. It's like this person was very stingy with the solder. They didn't want to put any extra solder on it. They didn't have to. Yeah, that I'm not happy with blue one either. Take the blue one off. Yeah. They didn't twist the wires, number one. They didn't use much solder, number two. Green one's okay. Brown one's a mess. I'm just gonna unhook the brown one completely. Restart, reattach it, untangle it so it's not tangled in between the other ones, and reattach it the correct way so it's not hanging out everywhere. These wires have a natural tendency to want to twist up because the actual wire over here is twisted, which gets to be a pain in the neck when you're trying to line things up. Can you just go in? Orange one is okay, red one's okay. So we pat we paired those there. And now we can turn this back over and set it back in. Yeah. Those look okay, they don't need a deep scrub and they'll get a scrub from the outside. Okay. And don't make the mistake of forgetting this right here. Now you, up here, you, right there, get in the holes, thank you, stop being all twisty. Sometimes you can rotate them and fix that twist, I'll try to do that after it's back together. Now, let's see. I was going to try something, but I'm just going to put it back together this way. That twisty is getting in the way, making it hard for me to hold it in place. But I'll just have to struggle around it. Okay, there we go. There, and we go. What I was going to do is I'm going to put that center screw in. I'm going to put, put the center screw in first to see if it made it easier to put it back together. But since I have this twisting here that's just... Magnetic screwdriver decided today is a good day to be magnetic. 
since I have that twist in the wire there, it makes it hard for it to lay flat. So, let's just get this back together. Then I'll look at rotating that wire to untwist it. Sometimes you can do it really easily. Sometimes you just add another kink to it. Get in there. Excuse me, get in the hole. Thank you. Let's make sure the buttons are going okay. All right. I've had it before where I put one back together and the buttons were stuck. And I don't know what caused it to stick the buttons. I had to take it apart and I couldn't see anything. I put it back together and the buttons weren't stuck. But they were catching on the on the case itself for some reason. But they were in place correctly. They were just catching. Now see, if you take and you rotate these things, sometimes, yeah, almost, almost, there we go. You can get them a better curl on it. At least that, now the curls are all the same way. There, okay. Now I'm going to give it a bath. Get out one of our bags. This is put the file in the layer pack. I'm going to give this a nice little bath. Where's my scrubby scrubber? Right here. Go down the sides with it. Right here. I, like I said, I may end up having to replace that because I don't like that little crack in it. It's got a little crack on the number four. You can see where somebody damaged it. doesn't mean it won't work. It will work, but it looks ugly. If I got one I can replace it with, I will. Otherwise, it will just be considered used, which it is. So, there we go. That one's done. All right, on to the next one. This one says it just has a dirty fire button. So, this is probably just going to need a cleaning. It will need a disc here, and let me see something. All right, one of my parts one had a disc on it. But, um, I don't know if I'm happy with that one. Well, I guess it's better than none. Let me show you how to take the disc real quick before I start taking this apart. You take your hair dryer or your heat gun if you have a heat gun whether you know it or not a hair dryer is a heat gun but so you take a hair dryer I'm gonna put on low first you may not hear me too well but what I'm gonna do is I heat this up I'm gonna take my little thin screwdriver and this one to get on the edge and lift it right off All right, my screwdriver didn't want to get under there. I was trying to mar it up, so I said, enough of that. And I just pulled it off with his net, and that worked. And since it is got the glue still on it, see, it's very sticky in the bottom. If you just take and you just reapply it here. Now you're going to say, but it's ugly. It's all scratched up. Yeah, it is. We're going to see what we can do about that later. But right now, all I'm concerned about is now that i got a disc on here. I'll sand it down. I can give it some sandpaper. If anybody out there is an entrepreneur or just likes to play, come up with a way of replacing these things. I know you can get like a little aluminum. Get, measure this out, find out the thickness of it, and get a little aluminum disc made with some double sided tape and you have yourself a captive market. People are going to buy them from you because there's a lot of these things that are damaged. I thought of replacing this with like a plastic. Like a little rounded plastic dome that had like a ColecoVision logo in it. I thought it would be awesome and cool as shit. So yeah, there you go. If you want to do that, you can do that too. Now if you look at this cord, you can obviously tell this cord has been stretched and stretched. Somebody pulled this thing a lot. But I have read and I tried one. And I tried one to go the other way to remove the coils. But I have read that you can replace or re... 
do these coils so that they're compressed again. If you compress them down and then you heat them up with, like if you use the tank and you use the compress, say wrap this around a stick and compress it down, or a dowel, compress down in a dowel so that it's nice and compressed all the way through the whole dowel. Then you take this whole thing and you put it in boiling water and let it sit for a while. It should cause it to go back into its normal compressed shape. Should. This is what I read. This is how they used to fix phone cables back in the olden days, back when people had real phones that had phone cables and all that. I mean, it, it may not work, but it's, it's an idea. It, give it a shot. If you feel like doing it, give it a shot. Let me know. Let us know if it worked. Now this one, remember, this one just had sticky buttons. It had a sticky fire button, dirty fire button. So, I'm just going to take it apart and do my normal cleaning on it. So I just gave you two ideas there if you're interested in doing things. Idea one was to replace that. And idea two, how to fix that. I've always wanted to, and maybe, again, anybody who's crap, this is really good in there, good. Really in there, good. Get out of it. Ooh, okay, you don't want to come out fine, you're going to stay out, I'm going to work, oh, no, it's coming out. Uh, get a little pressure. Don't want to break this plastic. Because this plastic is the joystick. Yeah, you're just not going to know how. Okay, fine. I'm going to have to work around it. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? I was saying something that was fascinating and interesting. At least to me it was. Uh, oh, keypad. I mentioned it in the other one. If anybody wants knows how to or feels up to creating a 3D printed version of this cover that you can put on here that actually gave you real keys. That would be freaking awesome. I'm going to use this on here, but first I'm going to do this in here. This one I'm going to have to work around because that doesn't want to come out and I'm not going to force it and break it. The little the directional thingy. I know they didn't call it the directional thingy in that Clico vision, but the thingy. It's hard to get in here. Get in there. Yeah, it's like that. Get in the hole. These things are a little wonder of design. They only use six, I believe it's six of the nine pins that go through. One's a power or a ground or something, maybe seven. But they only use a few of those pins, and they're able to transfer four directions, two fire buttons, and 12 controls. That's four, two, six, 12. That's 18 controls on a single line. That's very good. The way they do it is these diodes allow, if you press the one, it allows it to send a signal on multiple lines without interfering with other stuff. They all use the arm button and other lines. That's why you can't hold the arm button down and press these and have them register. You can hold the fire button down and press these. You can't use directionals and press these. The fire button is the only one that I believe you can hold down and get some kind of response if you press the keys. Now, this right here, I just want to scrub that beast. Look how clean that came. Isn't that pretty? All right. And you get back up here. You guys need some cleaning, too. You're dirty. You're dirty. You're so dirty. Why are you so dirty? Never, if you're ever working on these things, Never, ever stop and wonder, what is all this gunk? What is it from? You don't want to know. Is it chocolate or is it something else? You don't want to know. And heaven forbid you're working on a keyboard. Not an old Atom keyboard or old retro system keyboard because odds of them having something, like bodily fluids on them is very low. I mean, even the early PCs. There were some animated GIFs that showed, for lack of better words, titillating content. 
But the odds of you finding bodily fluids on a keyboard on an old PC is old, pretty rare. But if you got a keyboard from this PC from the dawn of the internet on, and it's dirty and sticky, you don't want to know what caused that dirty and sticky. You don't want to know. Or maybe you do. Maybe you're weird. I don't want to know. I usually close them down. I take it to the sink and I spray those things down. Because, yeah, you don't want to know. I mean, my keyboard's a mess. It's got food in it. I noticed that yesterday. Because when I take my lunch, I usually sit at my computer and I read the news while I'm taking my lunch. I don't go out for lunch. I sit in my office here and I just sit at my computer and I read the news. And I noticed a couple of days ago, I looked down, I'm sitting there eating my PB&J, and I looked down and I realized it looks like I had the ghost of PBJ had passed down in my keyboard. I'm like, ew, i got to take this thing apart and clean it again. Now, I mentioned on the previous one, sometimes you stick. What can happen to cause them to stick is if you tighten these down too much, they can cause these to stick. If that's happening, loosen this up like a quarter turn. To see if they release. They can happen. As Judy Tenudo Toronto to to nude. I think it's Tenudo Judy Tenudo. Crazy comedian from the eighties. Not many people liked her. I liked her. She's kind of weird. Very very dingy. She's she was like if you took um, Roseanne Barr and gave her ADD, and then gave her crack. That's how she was. But yeah, her thing was every time she gave her little told a little story. She would look at the audience and say, it could happen. I thought she was funny. She called everybody in her, in her audience her love slave. I'm going to take a piece of that sandpaper that I had. And I'm just going to see, what can I do with this? I'll put a little Windex on it just so I can do a wet dry sand. Let's just see. Can I get this thing cleaned up some? Hey, some of it's coming off. It really shouldn't affect the plastic on the outside because, one, I'm not sanding the plastic, but two, the plastic is pretty good, and I'm just removing the gunk and the garbage off of this disc. Let's see, see what I got there. Well, hell, that's working. That's working pretty good. Let's see that. I'm going in circular motions. That's working pretty well. It did leave a little wear on the plastic, but it just wipes it off. That's not too bad at all. Okay, so you can clean them back up. Not perfect, but better. Much better. Okay, the next one we have. This one just marked out as good ugly. And yeah, you can see. This one has a tear and the keyboard too and it's missing the pad. So good ugly just means that I'm not going to pull it apart. I'm just going to clean it because this will probably end up being a, more of a parts machine if I can't get the pieces to fix it. So I'm just going to give it a quick spray down just so it doesn't look ugly. Yeah, you see even dirty in there. That's pretty bad. These right here are hard to clean. You don't want to like stretch them out and clean them. You, you got to be real careful cleaning the wires. I'll show you one way of doing it here in a second. But you don't want to stretch it out so that it's so that it gets stretched out and worse than it already is. And this one's got a twist in it too. So I'll show you what I do here to clean it. There may be other ways. There probably is other ways. I mean, I'm not the expert. I'm just a guy who likes doing this stuff. But what you do is, first of all, I got this twist here. I'm going to see if I can get rid of it. Just by rotating this and see if I can make it want to, nope. I'm going to go the other way with it. Nope. Alright. So you just want to... Do I have to twist you all the way down? Oh, maybe I can twist it the other way. There we go. Got it. Get rid of that kink. And this one's the same way down here. If you just rotate them, sometimes you can twist the kink out. Nope, the other way. Just watch what you're doing, and as you're doing it, you'll see that it's working or not working. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rag here, wet it down some, and I'm just going to take, 
hold the rag right here and I'm just going to try to work my way down this without stressing it out. I'm trying to get in between the different cracks and crevices, pulling it apart a little bit. See, you can see I'm just pulling it apart and going in there. Put a little more spray. I probably could have sprayed the cable too. Did it. I'm just, basically, I'm just dusting it. This cable is kind of stiff. It's almost like it's been sitting in heat and it lost a lot of its stretchiness. But there we go. Yeah, she is ugly. But she's probably serviceable. Now this one says it doesn't go left and right and that the right button is dirty. So we're probably looking at a cleaning here for both the left and the right and the right button. Notice on the back it says Clico made in Taiwan. Patent pending. Did they ever get their patent? Would this have a patent? Did I don't think I've ever seen one that had a patent number on it. Did they just like rely on the fact that they were going to get the patent and didn't worry about putting, redoing the mold with a patent number? Yeah, they all say patent pending. Let me see. Even the Adam says patent pending, so maybe they never bothered to change the mold once they got once they got a patent. It's kind of lazy. Yeah, who knows? So there we go. This keypad's nice. All the wiring on this one goes right there. Two hole solders. So you have to go through the hole and solder. So this is a nice one. That's pretty good. It's got some stuff on it. A little uh, what do you call it? It's not corrosion, it's just got the white film on it from dirt, I guess. But let's just see. Again, left and right, directional, and uh, don't spray it with Windex. And the uh, right button is dirty, so. Woo, that was a lot. Did you get dirt and grime down here? This is a moving contact and it makes contact once you get in there, it makes that contact. You get some dirt and grime in there, it just stops it from contacting. It's the simplest reason why it doesn't work. It's not like it's broken, it just gets dirt and grime in there. Or even a little tarnish. Or corrosion. Or anything of that matter. So, what I'm doing is, again, like I showed you before many a time. Let's just remove any kind of tarnish or corrosion that might be on the buttons here. That one doesn't seem to have a lot on that. I like how these, the directional buttons, instead of saying up, down, left, and right, they say north, south, east, and west. They're a compass. Does it work with Google Maps? Probably not. Okay, so we got that cleaned out. Let's put you back in there. Now, let's just make sure, because I've had one in the past where the button, the directional buttons wasn't working and it ended up being, it wasn't the button, it was this plastic was just broken. So I'm just making sure that none of the tabs are like broke and just sitting up the air so that when you move them, they don't push down. That's always a possibility. So I should have mentioned that earlier that you should look for that. Mm -hmm. But we're getting there. Get in there correctly. Stay in the slot. Thank you. If you put these in upside down, you can actually assemble the case to a certain extent and then wonder why it doesn't work. So make sure there's a little slot on the bottom. Make sure that goes underneath the circuit board. Tips and tricks for Millie. Like hints from Heloise. It's one of those life hacks. I've mentioned them before. Okay, now it's. Hey, I got a message from eBay. Is that the guy apologizing for 
badly packaging up my Atom disk drive that he sent me to the point where it was shattered. I wonder if that's him. Well, yeah, I know when I purchased it, it said untested. But it did have a picture of it being fully assembled and still in one piece. Why aren't you going together? What's going on here? What's stopping you? What's stopping you from going in there? You're, you're like, you're not wanting to go down. Oh, you're not lining up. Get in there. Line up. In the hole. In the... Thank you. There you go. It wasn't lining up down here. It was like one little bit off. And because of that, I didn't want to line it, go in. So let's get this thing done here. So yeah, I ordered the disk drive. I mean, yeah, I, I got it cheap. I, I, I He listed it $75 untested, Adam disk drive, and power supply. And it was all solid and all that. And I said, you know what? It's worth buying it just for the piece. If I have to replace the parts on the board or something like that to get it working, that's totally fine. I'm good with it. And if I'm lucky and the untested means that they just didn't test it and it still works, I'm, I'm good too. So I bought it. And then he even contacted me and said he made a mistake and that he didn't say it was untested because it didn't say untested, it just said worked, which I kind of assumed didn't, wasn't true. But he said he made a mistake and that it listed that it was untested and I said, or he listed that it worked and was untested and I told him, I said, it's okay. As long as it's what's in the picture, I'm okay with it because, but then when I got it and I got it and you pick it up and you do the shake test of the box and you hear noises and that don't sound good. Then I opened it up and it was the front cover of the drive totally shattered, completely destroyed. All the pieces all over the place in there. And it's not like you can just go get another one. They don't exist as another one. So I got all the pieces and I may try to glue them back together, make it call it Franken Drive. But I wasn't happy about it. I haven't even tried to plug it in to see if it works yet, because I don't know. I sent him an email on Saturday showing the pictures, saying, what are we going to do? Well, I sent him pictures, and I thought, okay, he's an uh, eBay seller who does a lot of eBay, and so I just sent him pictures that says, um, this is how it arrived, assuming I'd get a message from him saying, oh, no, um, what do you want to do about it? And I didn't get none, so then yesterday... I sent another message, what are we going to do about the drive, about the condition of the drive, and got no message. So I said, you know what, fine, I went on eBay today, and I just said, I want to do a return. And in my contacts, I said, if you want to give me a discount, you want to give me 50% 50 off, because basically, right now, it's just total parts. And I wouldn't have bought the drive with the funk on. So we'll see. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I, I can't, you get these little dents on there. Nothing you can really do about them. That somebody wants to make new ones of these. It's a market. And here's the last one. I saved the ugliest one for last. Wires. <laughs> this one's a wreck. This will probably just be a parts one. It couldn't even test it. It didn't even want to work. So I'm, I'm just, I'm probably not going to fix this one. I'm probably going to say, you know what? That keypad is going to be a parts for one of the other ones that is good, that has a broken keypad. But I wanted to see what it looked like inside. I've had some of these come in like this, and they just look this bad, and they're just busted up. And it's like, okay, you know what? You had a good life, but now you become transplant material. We use parts of you to fix your brothers and sisters so that they can continue living because you, you have seen it all and you're done. Because if you look at it, the cable stretched out. It's torn here. You can try to shove this back through to get it down into the strain relief, and then maybe if you can get it in there, hit it with a little crazy glue and make it lock in place, but yeah, it's still going to come out eventually. The wire is stretching out. It's a mess. But I just want to see what it looks like inside, how badly it messed up inside. Alright, so in here we have everything's still attached. But it didn't work, even with the broken wires, so there's something wrong with it. And the front, this end here, it's, it might be hard to see on camera, but this has been through hell. This is so beat up. It's almost like it got dragged down the road or a dog chewed on Probably a dog chewed on but Yeah, this is going to be parts machine. I'm going to just salvage things off of this. This is going to be my parts. I'm not even going to attempt this. So, the last one, number 10, is basically just a parts machine. 
or par or parts machine, a parts controller. I will take in. What the hell is this from? What the? F what the heck are you? I've never seen that kind of stuff anywhere. What the heck? I don't know. I don't know how that came from. Did that come off the side of this? Is that holding this thing together? Who knows? Might have been. Yeah, I'm just gonna slap you back together temporarily, and you'll go on the shelf with the other parts with like pieces that I have like this that are just available for me to grab and use. Once I put this together, then I'm going to move the camera over to the actual atom and I'm going to show you the other nine. You know what? I'll even test this one and see how it works. Well, no, I, that's right. I did. I tested this one and it didn't want to work. So why bother doing it again? I didn't do anything to it. It's just dead. It, could, it wouldn't go in the slot either for that matter, I believe. Didn't want to make contact. So, anywho, this one will we'll do nine tests to cover parts one and two of this video series and see how they work out. So, one more screw. 